There was probably a time when I was younger when I would not have been interested in wearing the fragrance that I'm reviewing today. Uh, that fragrance is Dior Homme by Christian Dior. This is the Eau de Toilette version. Uh, there are a couple of, well, there's a few flankers, notably Dior Homme Intense, Dior Homme Parfum, and then there's Cologne and Sport and different years for those fragrances. Just a little bit of history about this fragrance. This was originally released in 2005, the perfumer uh, being Olivier Polge. In 2011, this was slightly reformulated, I guess, by Francois de uh for Christian Dior. Now, I haven't gone into in-depth detail about what actually changed about it, and I have not smelled uh, pre-2011 Dior Homme EDT. Looking at Fragrantica, it seems like there is one note missing from this that was in the previous one, and that is cardamom. So I'd be interested to hear anyone watching this who has a pre-2011 or original vintage with the silver stem. This one has a black stem, so I think the, the originals had silver stems. If uh, there is a noticeable difference, if you can pick up the cardamom in that, in that fragrance, supposedly. The one I'm reviewing is the 2011 version. My particular bottle is a 2014. As I was saying right at the beginning, there was a time when I was younger that I probably wouldn't have worn something like this or even liked it. And as many of you probably know, Dior Homme, I guess is one, well, it's one of the mainstream fragrances that was marketed to men with that distinctive iris lipstick note. And yes, the the very first time I smelled this, the first thing it reminded me of was makeup or lipstick, and it's certainly something that is uh, used in those type of cosmetics. So the immediate connotation in in the mind is that it's feminine. And the beauty of this fragrance is that it manages to use those traditionally feminine elements and make this a wonderful masculine fragrance. It is called Dior Homme. I will say though that it's absolutely unisex. Now, before I get into detail, and it's not going to be a, you know a long review. Uh, because a lot's been said about this fragrance. But I do want to specifically talk about why this is my favourite out of the three Dior Homme... Uh, well, out of the three Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme Parfum. This is the EDT. Those ones are the Parfum concentrations. They have their fans and a lot of people love those fragrances. I don't dislike them. But I think once we get into um, spraying it on my skin and, and breaking it down a little bit, I'll explain to you why this is my favourite and, and why I do like it very, very much. So let's get into the opening. And as I do that, you'll see the notes um, scrolling across the screen. Uh, I have dry down on this some, so I'll, I'll spray on this. Now, one thing I've got to say about Dior fragrances they have the best sprayers that I've come across in a niche or designer bottle. Uh, they're almost touch sensitive, you know, like you can do that and then you can go harder and the sprayers just work and they're a pleasure to use each time. They're, they're actually, they actually might not be a great thing because it, they tempt you into spraying more for some reason. Okay, so straight off the bat in the opening, this iris is there from the beginning for me on my skin. It pretty much stays there from beginning to end and all the other notes that are built around it are the things that develop and come in and, and go. So in in the opening, I do get this under, with the iris, I get this underlying freshness, um, a citrusy freshness and, and some 
some aromatic. So I, I find that the opening for the Diorom EDT is actually quite a lovely, smooth, bright opening. Not, you know, ultra citrusy bright, but it is a fresh, it is a, it does lean on the fresh side in the opening, which, which is very, very nice because it's what makes, I think, this fragrance quite versatile. Now, a few minutes in, after that opening, you begin to get this, this um, melding of amber and, and cocoa. Not, not an overly sweet cocoa, um, but what, what I think the amber is doing with the cocoa is preventing um, this dry, dusty cocoa that you can get in some fragrances when that note is used. And, and for a moment there, the amber and the cocoa seem to dim down the iris. Uh, so even though you can still detect it, um, it gets pushed to the background a little bit. And then ultimately, in the dry down, what you get, what I get on my skin is this wonderful, fine suede accord uh you know it's listed as leather but it just i visualize and imagine this beautiful fine suede um that you almost want to touch on your skin fine suede dusted with cocoa stained with lipstick this fragrance i find versatile enough to wear in warmer weather as well i mean i i, I would wear this you know apart from the the top heat of summer in the day this is i think more year round than something like dior homme intense and dior homme parfum i've tested those a couple of times and i and i can't go into too much detail other than other than from memory the dior homme intense was this much more amplified i think the iris note um is more amplified in that and probably more suited to a colder colder weather the autumn parfum is another beast again um definitely got more leather and cocoa i think in in that one so as as nice as they are the reason I, I really like this one and prefer the original Dior Homme is the versatility and also the fact that this on the skin is nowhere near as loud as I found Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme Parfum. Those, those have excellent longevity and they, and they project, but for me, this type of scent is something that I like to enjoy for myself. Now, in terms of longevity, I get about six hours is about average for me. Um, now, I got a bit longer when I wore this in the colder weather, and today being a little bit warmer, I wore this and six hours, it was definitely a soft skin scent. Projection is pretty soft as well for me, but the thing I like about it is that when I wear this fragrance, I tend to wear it and enjoy it for myself. When I'm wearing these fragrances, I'm, I'm usually not in the mood to wear a fragrance to try and impress anyone other than myself. It makes me feel good, it makes me feel cozy, it makes me feel, it does make me feel masculine and I do enjoy wearing this as a me fragrance and the EDT original Dior Homme is ideal for the, for to capture that for me. So I hope I've been able to explain why this I prefer this one to the other two um, flankers. I think I think what they did here is they got it right from the beginning. Having not smelled the original formulation, I can't compare it, but whatever Francois Desmarchi has done with this one, I'm very happy with it. Dior Homme uh, Eau de Toilette, this can still be had. Um, well, I got this 50 ml bottle for under $50 um, here in Melbourne. And I guess if you look around, you can find similar prices. So it's very well priced. 
um, fragrance as well maximum three to four sprays maybe if you need to it's a beautifully smooth versatile velvety fragrance and uh, I I really really enjoy it when I was younger this again would not have been something I would have liked but I think um, a fragrance like this is certainly um, a good entry point for people who are new to exploring fragrances uh, to try something that was definitely probably quite unique when it came out I know now there's lots of stuff coming out with with a, a similar vibe things like Valentino Uomo um, and Prada, Prada, the new Prada Lom I think is a similar vibe to this but it's a great way to start to try new things and you know even might be a gateway fragrance into the dangerous world of niche fragrance Dior de Homme EDT is my scent of the day and I hope you enjoyed that review I'm going to leave links to three other reviews on this fragrance um, one will be from Red Alesson Stephen one from Fragrance Bros and one from Waha Sawas um, who did a fragrance uh, review for this one Hopefully she'll return to YouTube sometime soon. That's Dior Om. Uh, leave a comment and I hope you enjoyed it.